Hey, Junior, soon to be seniors. What? That's crazy. We hope you're having a great day. And we know that summer's around the corner, so a lot of you may be, I don't know, anxious, worried about what you should be doing over the summer to help prepare you for the college application process. So I made a summer fun guide in 12 slides, and I get that fun is probably not accurate, but it's a guide nonetheless. So here we go. Now, when I searched in the Googles for high school kids enjoying their summer, here's a, here's the picture I got. Let me tell you how there there's three problems with this picture. Number one, none of these kids are in high school. Like these are 30 year olds, let's be honest. Two, there is no way that five friends all color coordinate in such a way in, in this pastel. And the third thing is guy on the left is clearly the cool one, right? And so the guy on the right, you can tell, he's angry that dude with the jawline on the left is cool and he's not. There's some real anger and hate in his eyes. So this could be you and your friends this summer. I don't know. I don't judge you. But here's the most important thing you need to know. This is the most important slide for this entire thing. Number one is you should have fun this summer, man. Lots of it. Like <laughs> you've been in a pandemic. You've been given this like circumstance that you didn't ask for and you certainly don't deserve. So you should spend a lot of time relaxing this summer and having fun. Please don't spend the entire thing working on college applications. You just don't need to. Like you could, in theory, do nothing over the summer to prepare for the college application process, and you can still apply to college in the fall. People do it all the time, okay? Now, like, y y you need plenty of wall staring time, and here here's how I'll explain that. My wife and I talk about, like, we have kids, and life is stressful sometimes, and sometimes we just want to sit for, like, 30 minutes and stare at a wall, like, completely empty our minds and just be, just exist. You need to have plenty of wall staring time, okay? And like I said, you can do nothing. You don't have to do anything and we can help you apply to college just fine. Now, if you're anxious and you have the time or both or whatever, there are a couple things you could do over the summer to make your life maybe easier. You could do your essay, right? You could work on it and have a like at least a rough draft of it ready to go for the fall. And you could work on your resume. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you some slides to help you with both those things. And I'm gonna show you a resume template um, that you have access to that I can help you with that to give you some quick tips, okay? So let's talk about the essay first. We say writing the college story, not an essay, because it's really not an essay, all right? And if you don't know what you want to write about, here are some things that you could do to get an idea. So things to know, like again, it's a story, it's not an essay, right? So it may look different from what you write in English class, and that's okay. I'll give you more info on that in just a second. A lot of kids are like, man, I, I've never overcome something insane. Like I've, I've lived a, a fairly like privileged, charmed life where like things have been relatively easy, and that's great. Like you've won the lottery, if that's the case, that's awesome. You don't have to have some extraordinary story to write a great college essay. If we pick the right story and tell it well, you can take something very ordinary and turn it into an extraordinary essay for colleges to write. So we'll talk about that in a second. I think it, the best way to find out what to write about is talk to your parents. Because I swear, like when you're born, there was a switch that came on in your parents' heads, or your guardian's heads, whoever it is, um, that said, man, like I'm going to take care of this person. I'm going to remember everything from their entire life. So your parents have all of these stories built in their brain, this like data bank of things that you've done that you could write about. So what I would do is I would talk to both your parents and I would talk to them separately. If you just have one parent or guardian, that's totally fine too. Talk to them. But if you have two, talk to them separately so you get six total stories. So I want you to ask them for three stories. First story is what story from my life? It could be, it doesn't have to be high school. It could be when I was two years old to now, whenever. What story from my life made you most proud? which one was most surprising, and which one was the funniest. You can share those stories with your college counselor, um, just like the Cliff Notes version of them, and they can help you draft a story from those things. So I'll give you a quick example. I had a, well, I actually can't give that example because you might know who it is. But anyway, talk to your counselor, give them those stories, and they can help like bridge that gap for you to really write like an excellent essay. Okay, so now that you have the idea, potentially, you need to know how to write it. And there are a lot of different ways you can write a college essay, but we've come up with a four paragraph method that's really easy to follow and that's effective. Again, you don't have to use this, but you certainly can. So there's a four paragraph method. Paragraph one, I know this sounds weird, but it's one to three sentences max, okay? It's short and sweet. You wanna grab the reader with suspense, and I'll give you an example for that in just a second. Um, and I like to call it your movie trailer. Like you wanna tell the reader just enough, oh, there's the bell, I'm at school. Um, you wanna tell the reader just enough to get them to come see the movie. But if you set, if you gave them too much in the movie trailer, then they're not gonna buy a ticket. So we just wanna give them enough to grab their attention. So let me give you an example. Some students write about like their parents getting a divorce. And I've read lots of essays that start like this. I remember like it was yesterday. My mom came to wake me up for school like she always did, but I knew something was different. 
She told me my parents were getting a divorce. It was the most difficult thing I have ever been through, but it made me who I am today. That's a really lovely like introductory paragraph, but in my opinion, it's not effective. So what I would do is I would change it to this, and I'll tell you why in just a second. I would change it to this. I remember like it was yesterday. My mom came to wake me up for school like she always did, but I knew something was different. That's the entire first paragraph. And the reason why it's short and vague like that is this. Admission reps have about five to 10, maybe 15 minutes max to learn everything about you and make a decision, at least a first like decision, right? They may be multiple reviews of your application, but the first one is quick, okay? So if you give them a summary of the entire essay in the first paragraph, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna skip the rest because they don't need it. Like you've told them the entire thing. So you need to grab their attention. That's why one to three sentences max is good. You don't want to give too much away. But after reading that one, like my parents came in and, and to wake me up for school and I knew something was different. As a reader, I'm like, well, what happened? Like I need to know, right? So you want to grab their attention. Then you move to paragraph two. Three to five sentences max. A little longer than the first paragraph, but still pretty short. When we think about the five who, so who, what, when, where, and why. In paragraph two, we want who, what, when, and where. We don't want why. We just want who, want, when, and where. You want to put the reader in the scene, so take them to your room when you have that conversation, but don't put them in your brain. You don't want to analyze what happened. You just want to give them the story quickly so they have context for what's going on. Okay. So hopefully they're like, well, that's an interesting story. What did they learn from it? You're going to talk about that in paragraph three. Okay. In paragraph three, as many sentences as you need. Don't worry about word count right now. As many sentences as you need, your counselor can help you narrow it down if you need to. In paragraph three, as many sentences as you need. Talk about what it meant then. Like, how did it change you in the moment? Like, you're sitting in the room, your parents are telling you, your mom's telling you this, just as the example. Your mom's telling you what's happening. How did it change you in that moment? How did you change as a person right then and there? Not moving forward, just right then and there, whenever it happened, okay? Then in paragraph four, I know it's really hard to end things, especially essays, it's really hard. So do, I, would, I would recommend doing it this way. As many sentences as you need for paragraph four. What does it mean moving forward? The lessons you've learned from this experience, how does it change you as a college student, as a grown up, as maybe a parent or a spouse one day, whatever, or partner? Um, and how will it help you and others in college and beyond, right? So talk about how it changed you as a person and take the time to say, you know what? I've gone through this experience so when I meet people in college and in my life moving forward, I can be empathetic to their circumstances because I've lived it and I've figured out how to, how to work a way around it or through it, okay? So that's the four paragraph method. Um, now, here's some mistakes that kids make. You get 650 words on your main college essay, okay? Most kids will use paragraph one and two. They'll use 450 words of that 650 because they get wrapped up in the story. They want to tell the story really well. And then they spend like 200 words on paragraphs three and four. It should be the exact opposite. Colleges care the most about three and four. Paragraph one and two is a means to an end. You need to get them in, involved in the, in the story. And then you really hammer home your point in paragraph three or four, three and four, so 450 words there. The other thing is spacing. When I went, uh, worked as a college admission rep, I read like 100 essays a day for five months. Um, and if a kid put it all entire one paragraph, like this big block of text, it like made my brain want to explode, okay? So make sure to space it out really well. Um, you don't need to do like tabs on paragraphs like you do on an English paper, because you won't be able to do that really on your college essay anyway. But you definitely need paragraphs. You can keep it all aligned on the left-hand side, but you want separate paragraphs so it makes it easier for you. Okay? So that's how you could write the college essay. You don't have to, but that's a way to do it. So again, write your college essay this summer if you can, like get it for updraft. The other thing you do is a resume. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a resume template that you can use. Again, you don't have to use this, but you can use it and it's effective and easy to use. So let me show you some stuff. So the first thing you should know is you may want to make sure to change this. Kids always forget to change like fake person information. So make sure this is your info, okay? Keep these weird looking lines on there for now because it helps with space and alignment. Well, once you get done, we're gonna take those off and then everything's like nice and aligned and neat and professional looking. A um, Couple things to know. Oh, let's undo that and put these back on all borders. Okay, cool. So there's different sections. Education these, these days will change obviously once you like the years you started at St. Agnes. You don't need to put middle school, right? Just high school stuff. Um, you can start with honors and distinction, so any honor you get. Um, then you can do extra curricular activities, community service, internships, employment, summer activities. Do you have to have everything in these categories? No, like if you don't have any of these, just get rid of the section. Totally fine. Do they have to be in this order? No, they don't have to be. I think the order you put your extra curricular activities in is important, so you can talk to your college counselor about that. But you don't need to worry about that at this point while you're just making it. So a couple things to note. 
kids tend to spend the most time on two things. These, like they're like, how on earth do I write these bullet points? So I, we've come up with a rule of two, okay? The first bullet point should be, if you're, let's say you're talking about speech and debate. The first bullet point should say, what speech and debate is at Sayang as, as a whole? So as a whole, speech and debate compete in public speaking and intellectual debates, right? Whatever, whatever the phrasing is. And you always want to start with an action verb. So you don't want to say like, we compete or I record, like just compete and record. They can also be fragments. They don't have to be full sentences. There's a lot of debate on like, should you do periods or not? I don't think it really matters as long as you're consistent. So if you do periods, cool. If not, then don't. And then the second bullet point is, what did you specifically do for the speech and debate team? So if you're the secretary, maybe you're, you record and compile information for the team. Also think about tense. Like if you're still in speech and debate or plan on doing it senior year, then you want to use present tense. If you were on like JV soccer for two years, then you would put competed or recorded or whatever. So you change the tense on there. The other thing too is kids spend a ton of time on this, right? Um, <clears throat> you get out like a calculator and you try and like, it, there is no resume fact checking police. So like ballpark estimate, do the best you can, but it doesn't have to be exactly precise. It's not like, man, we love Agnes, but if she had just spent <clears throat> one more hour a week in speech and debate, we'd admit her. Like it's just not, <clears throat> it's not that granular. So I just want an idea of the, t the commitment you spent on it, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exact, okay? The only difference between these two things is that for community service, we like you to do the hours, weeks, and year, but also like hours total, just so you get a, a, an idea of the, the time commitment you use. Also, this means like how many hours per week did you do it? How many weeks per year did you do it? And how many years did you do it? So if you only do it in the school year, 36 weeks is kind of the standard because there's you know four or nine week quarters or whatever. Um, so 36 weeks is fine. <clears throat> also, if it's like, well, we only spent three out, like 30 minutes a week meeting or even less like it's okay to round up to one like you don't need to add in minutes it's okay um so the other thing too is kids will um finish their first entry and then they'll start the next one and they'll put it in the same box um and that can cause trouble eventually because eventually the alignment will get messed up so instead of putting it in the same box for each activity add a new box and start from there you can add them all here as many as you want you also want to add a blank <clears throat> uh, row in between each section in between each activity so that the spacing is nice and organized and it's really easy to read okay so again like this summer should be a lot of you relaxing and recharging from a really difficult school year so make sure to do that but if you have some time and you want to get a little bit ahead in the process we think having a, a draft of your resume and essay done hopefully like if you can do it before summer break and send it to your counselor for feedback cool but if not do it over the summer, and then when we get back in August, we're happy to give you feedback um, on anything you need us to look at. Okay, so again, enjoy your summer. Um, use this if you'd like, and then otherwise, just we hope you have a really relaxing summer, and the college application process is going to be just fine. We're going to help you every step of the way, and things are going to turn out just the way they need to. Okay, so hope you guys have a great summer. Uh, we will miss you, and we will see you in August.